to the Modern Basketball Podcast, also known as the MLB Podcast. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast, where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Tuesday afternoon, Ja? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good as well. How's it? How was the snow over there? Oh, the snow over here is horrendous. <laughs> I wish I could show you right now, but uh, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, well, at least you don't have to shovel it. Well, at least I don't, for real, for real. <laughs> yep, so be grateful for that, because I do. Um, I hope I'm having a good day. I hope I'm, we'll have a good day. Uh, a lot of happened around the association from last night's basketball games, so let's get right into it. First, starting off with the Phoenix Suns going up against the Alice Mavericks, and this was a <laughs> this was a good, entertaining game. Uh, Luka Doncic, of course, showed up right behind me. Chris Paul had a tremendous first half in game, and then Devin Booker stepped up late. And in the end, it was Devin Booker in his first game back, knocking down the game-winning three-point shots to take the lead and eventually win the game and beat the Mavericks by one. Yeah. Your thoughts? Uh, well, you said it right there. Um, the main highlight for me is Devin Booker. Devin Booker um, – First game back, surprisingly, because we didn't know if he it, we didn't know his status at the time last last episode, but he came back and even though he struggled to get on the roll in the first three quarters, that fourth quarter he was just the king of it, Mamba mentality all the way. The way he was just getting bucket after bucket after bucket, he I think he scored five consecutive buckets within that fourth quarter until he missed one, and then he he again he's one of the great young elite scorers in the game right now. And he showed you with that game winner. He showed you right then and there with that game winner. So Paul started it off. Booker finished it. Yep. Paul had 34. Booker had 25. The way this game was going, it looked like in that fourth quarter, it looked like the Suns were trying to, you know, move away, trying to get a, yeah. trying to get out of there. And the Mavericks went on a 9-2 run and then got back into the game. And then they were the ones that had to leave late. It was up by two. And, but they couldn't, well, one, the second chance opportunities was killing them. Yeah. Um, there was one, man, you know, the Chris Paul had missed a wide open layup. <laughs> it could have tied the game in a clutch moment. And then Aiden got the rebound and it was jump ball and they got the jump ball, but they missed it and ran out of bounds. Um, there was another one that was, it was uh, another ball that was last touched by Doncic after like two missed shots by the Suns. The Suns got it back. A lot of second chance um, opportunities um, in that like yeah. final two minutes yeah, yeah. for um, for Phoenix, and that really helped them. And and then, I mean, that play that they had with Devin Booker hitting that shot that was a second chance opportunity, I believe. Yeah, um, it it was a second chance opportunity because they correct. I think it was. I think it was the not the not the not the late that was jump ball. It was jump ball. It was yes. It was the jump ball. Yes, yeah. it was the jump ball. The jump ball went out of bounds, and then um they used Chris Paul as a decoy, it and set the pick, and as a result, Devin look at, if it was any other play. Yep, the game. Yep, the um Booker came, and then look at Booker had. I saw I saw the play, and Booker had a good amount of space in between him and his defender to get up off that shot, and he had a nice look look from right there. And as a yep. result, he was able to make it. And that was a great play call by Monty Williams coming off the timeout, using Chris Paul, who had the high hand as a decoy, and have a Booker come from the left wing, from running to the top of the key, and then ran to the right wing. And as you said, that little bit of space, but shooters will shoot. And he's one of the best players in this game today. So, of course, you know, you got to make that shot, you know? And I he just, did. Yeah, I just wish I want to saw more. Of course, again, A.N. is a great young, talented big man. And he did a lot on the on the rebounding category, but his awareness sometimes I feel like he his awareness on the court at certain moments is just off. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. It's like he's just lost at times. He needs to get better with that. Uh, yeah, that's that's tough because awareness is not really a thing you can teach. Yeah, it's but it was like, but yeah, I understand that. But there was like one play in which, like you know, I guess he didn't realize it, but nobody was guarding him. He was open wide underneath the basket. And when the moment he caught it, it looked like he 
he felt like as if somebody was behind him. So as a result, he he didn't even feel like he 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 fumbled to put up a good shot. Like he kind of instead of dunking it, he threw it up, and then that's the reason why when he got the rebound back, KP blocked him because he oh, wasn't yeah, aware. Yeah, 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 and also he had flung Josh Richardson on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Josh that Richardson was got two. Moment. Yeah, and Josh yeah. Richardson got two free throws with less than fifty seconds left. That could have been mm-hmm. um, key for them, and that was key for the Mavericks, but you know how the game went. So it wasn't that key. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for, as for this Dallas team, what do you think can they do to get back in, you know, their winning column, the winning ways? Um, in my opinion, um, I don't think they're going to find a defensive stride yet, even though they got some people who you could probably name that could be possible good defenders. Um. I just say for this, at this point, my main thing is, in my opinion, the number one aspect, even though there's multiple aspects that they got to change, my number one aspect is the fact that KD, KP got to get involved more now. I Like, I know come back off injury and stuff and everything, but I feel like now he needs to be that dude that we all know him to be, a dude who could be putting up like 24 to 25 plus a game now. I, I feel it like... I feel like they he did well in last night's game, and they yeah, utilized yeah, him pretty well in last night's game. No, nah, he did. He did. He did. But I feel like from – but, again, I feel like not just this game. It's like every game now because there's games in which, like, you know, he's having games like what he did last night against the Suns, but there's also games in which he's just only only hovering around 16 points. And, again, it's not easy to, it's not easy to get 16 points in the NBA, but a talent like him should be having way more than that. You know what I mean? That's the reason why I say that. Yeah, I do agree with you. I think uh, Rick Carlisle has a lot on his hands in terms of what to do with this Mavericks team, what system to figure out for KP, and how to help and how to best use Luca without him losing his mind. Because you saw Luca at the end of the game, <laughs> missing after missing the um, potential game winner because they did have a have another possession left, one point five seconds left after Booker made the shot, full timeout, and that was a really deep three on two guys, so yeah. you can't really fault them. I think the better play should have been drawn up, Yeah, actually. Because that's that's not really – I know with the NBA now and people hitting those shots, people can be like, oh, that's a good shot. That's not really a good shot. You could have got a better shot. You didn't need a deep three. You only down by one. You could have you had them roll into the basket, get it, either a mid-range shot or a floater, exactly. you know, something along that lines, or maybe a backdoor cut, easy layup or something like that. But I just, I, yeah, I didn't really like how that last one was – yeah, uh, yeah, drawing up. Yeah, that kind of been a better play. But also, I don't think we acknowledge him, but we should also acknowledge the fact that Josh Richardson had an efficient game, though. Yeah, okay. he did. He was balling out. He had 25, 24, 25 in the game, I believe. Yeah. yeah, he did. He was key to them, especially trying to get back into the game. He was really productive and helped them. Yeah. But nonetheless, the Suns do take this win off of the Devin Booker three-point shot and game winner. And now, I feel like, you know, the Suns are kind of – Getting kind of getting more rolling and rolling and rolling. Now Devin Booker's back now, so it should that should be amped up more. So a great win by the Suns and another heartbreaking loss by this Mavericks team. We'll see what they can do to get back into the winning ways in the next upcoming games. Yeah. All right. That was the only primetime game that happened. So is there any games you want to talk about? Any player performances? Any team specifically, like the guy behind me, that you want to go over? <laughs> um, um, yeah. So, so before I, I'm not gonna get on to that game first. The game I want to go to is the Kings versus Pelicans. Um, that was a really good game down the stretch, going all into it. Everybody on that. Um, the, here's the thing. So it was really close to start off the game in terms of both teams. They were both exchanging buckets. Hustle, intensity, energy, especially from the Pelicans side, that the way that they were getting their opportunities, second chance points, hustling, getting um passing the ball, like you know, extra passing to get open shots. Like it was really good passing by the Pelicans. But then that fourth quarter hit, and it was mainly the Kings, but yet more specifically, it was mainly De'Aaron Fox, who scored, I think, like 15 of his team's fourth quarter points going down that stretch as I think the Pelicans, I said the Pelicans, the Kings had like, I think finished off that fourth quarter scoring 28. And De'Aaron Fox is the main reason to why 
they they went on that roll and had that run. The Kings went on that run for that reason specifically because of him. And don't get me wrong, I'm not. I'm let's not exclude the other players there. Um, Rashawn Holmes, he had he was balling. His 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 role for that team is so well suited for him. The way the things that he could do, especially the fact that that team is offensive orientated. And Harrison Barnes, Harrison Barnes hit some hit some big shots too. So, yeah, the good good one by the good one by the kid. He looks more he looks more comfortable with his ball handling, everything with his shot creating. Harrison Barnes and good just good one by the Kings. Disappointment one by the Pelicans. Like you know, because this was uh, this is the game that they should have won, but yet things just. There's so many games they should have won. (laughs) Like they shouldn't be seven and twelve. Yeah. You know, but hey, a good one by the Kings, and of course, all jokes. Harrison, it was Harrison Barnes. He, he is a good player, and I think he's been um better coming to the stride ever since he left that Warriors team. Actually, when he was yeah. on Dallas, and now when he's with the Kings. Um, but this this Kings team, I feel like they need to uh make some type of change if they want to, you know. It's better in that Western Conference. I don't know what that change is, whether it's coaching staff, whether it's player, but I feel like they just need to make a change. But I, I yeah, I, I admit, in my opinion, I know I just talked about Rashawn Holmes, but I feel like they just need a better center. <laughs> you just took <laughs> I, I like I like I feel like they need to like he he had he balled out, but I feel like the Kings they need a talented big man. Whether that's in the draft or they could get one, I doubt that they could get one through the trade block, but if it's in yeah, the draft, that, that talented big man was supposed to be Marvin back. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> oh man, but he got ejected in last night's game. So he wasn't really a factor. And he had seems like he hasn't been a factor for most of this season, really. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard much from him. I haven't seen much from him. <laughs> I haven't seen much. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, any other games you want to go over? Um, I think me and you want to both go over this one. Um, the Hornets versus the Heat. Yes, um, the Hornets <laughs> versus the Heat. <laughs> yeah. Um, Malik Monk. Where did he come from? <laughs> well, uh, well, before we we'll, we'll talk about this. But before we go into um talk about Malik Monk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Heat team. Dragic came back. Bradley came back. Igudala came back, and obviously Butler already made his return. So now it feels like okay, you know they're, they're back. They kind of they're getting back to their groove. And now I feel like you know they need to get back to that style of play, that system, and that mindset that they had going for them last year. You know, probably take a couple games, but I felt like I thought that you know this was the game. I thought they had it. They were up by like ten with yeah. four minutes left, and then. It is just collapse, and I'll now now I'll let you go. What you what you want? Well, yeah, just like what you said, they had a good they had a good lead, um, going down throughout the quarters, and like as, and you felt like as if this this was their game for the taking, especially in that fourth quarter, because I believe they had a comfortable lead in that fourth quarter. Yep, they was up by ten. Yeah, they was up by double digits, and then all of a sudden, again, this has been a constant common theme when it came to this young Hornets team is the fact that. They play with energy, and when they have, and even though they're not a good defensive team, with that, with that young energy that they have, they're able to go on runs on both ends of the floor. And as a mm-hmm. result, you've seen that. You've seen how the fact that they were able to pick up their offense so quickly, turn that defense into offense, because that's what they've been doing the whole game, just hustling, being intense, trying to fight, just like what this Miami Heat team is all about. They try to equalize them in a way, and you saw it going down the stretch and that's the reason why they was able to go up big in overtime yep and the story heading into this game was Lamelo ball because terry rozier did not play so that means Lamelo ball got his first start in his young nba career and he played pretty well he did but he was a story coming into the night but he wasn't the story at the end of the night the story at the end of the night as you alluded to earlier was malik monk who, who did just he was for? <laughs> yeah he just had it going he could not miss he really could not miss and he came up big for them and he let that come back in that fourth quarter i'm um, hitting yeah. big shot big shot he tied the game hitting yeah. a three in the corner and he yeah he they had no answer for him 
Nobody yeah. could guard him. It was just his night. It yes. was one of those nights for him. South Beach vibes. He, he, he felt that Miami weather. <laughs> 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 and it, it gave him some confidence, man, because, like, where did he come from? It was like, you know, I haven't heard about this dude. When was the last time we heard about him? Malik Monk, <laughs> since he got drafted. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I mean, he had, he's, a pretty, he's a pretty good, like, role player for this Hornets team ever since he um came to it. But this was, yeah, this was his, this was his night. I mean, he hit nine threes on the night. Yeah. Just shooting. And, I mean, he's always been a good three-point shooter. But just tonight specifically, yeah, he was something different about him. Yeah. And then, yep, he let them – um got them to overtime. And then late, De- Devontae Graham took over from there. <laughs> yep. Devontae Graham – not just Devontae Graham. The, the team just kind of had it clicking offensively. They could have missed a shot going into that overtime. And it was just theirs for the taking at that point. And – a shocking loss by the for the Heat. Just a shocking, yep. loss. shocking loss for the Heat. This Hornets team come back trailing from behind 10, force it into overtime, and then win this game in overtime. Yeah. Shocking. But all right. The other games that I want to talk about was one, the Hawks and the Lakers did do battle in Atlanta. And this was a pretty good game. Um uh, back and forth. It looked like the Lakers were edging it out, you know, closing the gap late in the fourth quarter. But then the Hawks made a little run. Trey Young, the little logo shot. <laughs> Next thing you know, the Hawks are down by one with uh, with a minute and 30 to go. Then LeBron, you know, LeBron, greatest players of all time, hit a three, yeah. then had an easy layup and closed out that game. That was it. The Lakers yeah. were able to beat this Hawks team. That's all you really, really much needed to say, you know. Yeah. And I believe he is two field goals away from passing – Wilt on third all time for field goals. I do not know. I'm sorry. I, I believe I think that's I think that is the stat. Correct me if I'm wrong. Go look it up after this. <laughs> okay, I was like, I do not know. But yeah, a good win by the Lakers. And I believe their next game will be a home game because they've been on the road a lot. <laughs> they ain't been losing on the road too. Yeah, but I feel like they got it, they got it back now. This win against the Hawks, the win Saturday against Celtics. Yeah, I think they got it back now. They got to have a little few days rest and then come back Thursday, which I believe is their next game. All right. And the other game that I watched was, of course, the Bulls and the Knicks game. And this was a good back and forth affair. Lori Markinen had it going. Had it going. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. For the first, uh, I would say, what, two and a half quarters and then. He didn't make a shot after that. But nonetheless, <laughs> he did have a going and he did finish the night with 30. He did finish the night with 30. All right. So, like, you yeah, have to don't... Say it like that. Yeah, it's like you don't have to say it like that. Eh? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, as I was saying, back and forth affair issued in the fourth. The Knicks were down by three, quickly hit a three, then good ball movement by the Bulls. Kobe White had open corner three with 40 seconds, 40 something seconds left. Um, Randall had a turnover late and then Levine on a high pick and roll, which it seems like nobody in the league knows how to defend a high pick and roll <laughs> on a high pick and roll. He was left wide open and that's just easy from Zach Levine. And then he, he closed out this game and the Bulls was able to beat this Knicks team. 110, 102. Yeah. But all right. Now it's prediction time. Predictions for tonight's set of games. Only a few games tonight, but these should be interesting. First, starting off the Raptors and the Magic, who you got? Raptors. The Raptors. I have the Raptors as well. Next primetime game, TNT 730. Should be a good one. It is the Los Angeles Clippers up against the Brooklyn Nets. Who you got? The Nets. Get the Nets. I got the Clippers. The Grizzlies or the Pacers? Pacers. Pacers. I got the Grizzlies. Grizzlies have been hot seven in a row. Yeah. The yeah. two teams that has no defense. The Blazers or the Wizards? I, I think I'm going to pick the Wizards. I feel like they got some momentum now. I hope I don't jinx it, but yeah. I, I got the Wizards only because of uh, the injuries for the Blazers. Yeah. The Pistons off of the one game losing streak, Jazz. <laughs> yeah, Jazz got, got this one. 
Got this one. Yeah, I got the Jazz as well. And lastly, the last primetime game and the last game of the night, which we'll be talking about, features the Boston Celtics up against the Golden State Warriors. Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics as well. All right. I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? Um, think I had something and then I totally forgot. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, DSJ um request to go to the D League was accepted, so he, I mean, G League, D League, I think it's 2K11. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, his request to go to G League, G League was accepted, so now he'll be playing in the G League, the Westchester Knicks, for. I don't know how long. Hopefully, he gets his confidence back. Hopefully, he gets his groove back and his rhythm back. And teams, yep. teams and the Knicks realize that oh, yeah, he yep. is. You know, he is fit for the league. You know, yeah, he is. He he's just been robbed. Again, it. Hey, it's Raptors, not Luca. Was it's just, not Luca's fault for being that great. <laughs> it's not, but I'm just saying the Mavericks. It, it, the Mavericks drafting Luca was the beginning to the end, in my opinion, for him. Well, not the end. Well, but trading Luca. Mm-hmm. I mean, trading, trade, trading, 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 trading him. Trading him. Yeah, trading for him. But yeah, I mean, and I guarantee you, hey, if the Mavericks can do it over again, they would. <laughs> they would do it <laughs> over. Luca's I won't, I won't. I won't go against that. But as a result, like the like, the Knicks are not playing to him well, and it's just like he's nobody. They're not trying to ship him anywhere because nobody's watching because he's not playing. Yeah, nobody wants him. <laughs> yeah. So now he has to go to the G League just to prove himself, show teams. Hey, but hey, the G League has helped a lot of players. Danny Green came from the G League. Alex Caruso came from the G League. Devontae Graham came from the G League. So Chris Middleton. Yeah. Chris Middleton. Uh, Jeremy Lin, of course, originally. Yeah. So we'll see how this, this helps him. I hope it does because, you know, he's a young player. He got a lot of potential. He had a lot of talent. I don't think he, he can be a, a good NBA player. Yeah. But, but all right, anything else? No. Nah. All right, so we'll leave it off on that note. Thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also follow the IG down in the description below. And once again, I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is the Mind of Basketball Podcast.